So my name is Cal and I'm building a startup completely from scratch. The idea? A dating app where you actually talk. That's about all I can reveal for now though. My goal is to document every single line of code written from start to finish. The successes and the struggles. As authentically as possible. I wish the people that built Tinder had a series like this and my hope is that one day my app will become an actual competitor to Tinder. So thank you so much for clicking on this video and I hope you enjoy it. All right, um, we are back. We're just gonna continue trying to make the user flow or the, the sign up flow, I mean, for when you sign up to the app. We need to add some things in order to actually make the base function of the MVP work. I, I'm pretty excited today to just get started. So don't really have much more to say than that. All right, we seem to actually have it working right now oh my god i'm about to fall it seems like it works we can actually sign up we have the steps up here step one out of three starts out being purple here and then once you've selected everything you press next and the bar kind of moves across here it progresses the whole thing what i really would want is what you can see happens now when i go next like you can see like a new screen sort of slide across which means that the progress bar here is not super clear that this is a progress bar because it kind of slides across so you don't really it sort of wipes away the fact that it wasn't as far along in the previous page if that makes sense so what would be better is if this part of the app the top part here the steps and the progress bar if that is like a constant thing and the part of the screen that actually is like swipes across it's just all the stuff that's below here. Then it will be more clear up here that this actually is a progress bar. So we're gonna ask Mr. Grok if he can change this. Okay, this looks pretty good. It seems like we can do most of the things that we want. Profile picture we can't add yet. So we have a progress bar down here that actually stays consistent. Like it doesn't just pop another page on top of this page. But you can actually see that the progress bar kind of moves along. Now it's way too far down. We want to have it somewhere else, but it's a progress bar. It doesn't really matter at this point as long as we have it. And this is why using ChatGPT or Grok in this case is so good, I think, because they just, I can just tell them, create this. And even though I could create this, I could write the code that actually would do this, it would just take me way longer. I would have to figure out what do you use to create a bar like that? Where do I put it? I have to do all the things of like positioning it on the screen. I mean, this is just way faster. Once I have all the fields, I can then spend the time to adjust them and like make them look the way that I want them to look. But here we have like the base set up in a matter of like seconds really, even included my description of what I wanted. What we need to do now is we need to remove the need for the profile picture. And then I want to see if we can actually store this in the database somehow. Okay, so I basically just omitted uh, the things that we don't, that we haven't quite uh, done correctly yet. So we're going to do cal, we're going to set the birth date because what, what I want to test is can we actually save this now to the database or is there something else that's uh, not quite right yet? So, to eat. Okay, error saving profile. Uh, data store, data store plugin has not been added to Amplify. So this video is actually sponsored by Monday.com and the reason that I'm really excited about having them as a sponsor is because when managing my projects, whether it's building an app or creating a tech startup or organizing my team's next big sprint, whatever it might be, I know how difficult it can be to actually juggle all of these tasks at once, which is why I think monday.com is such a great tool because it's not just an all-in-one platform for project management. It's actually a product that fits right into the way that I work because monday.com integrates seamlessly with all the different tools that I use for my work, which is like Gmail, Slack, Zoom, Google Drive. So for example, something that I really like is how easy it is to create or update tasks in monday.com directly from Slack. So with just a few clicks, I can turn a Slack conversation into actionable tasks 
So no more chasing files or switching between different apps. Everything I need is right where I would want it. And on top of this, the customizable workflows and the visual boards really help me just stay organized and get an overview of the progress that I'm making. It helps me delegate and just stay organized in general. And now with AI features built in, Monday.com helps me work smarter by spotting blockers and automating repetitive tasks. So if you're ready to take your productivity to the next level, there's a link in the video description where you can try Monday.com completely free. So check that out, link in the video description. And thank you again to Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Okay, we seem to have some sort of problem. There is no variable here called call ID. But if we go to the resourcing, you can see that there is a variable here called call ID. Unless it's a, that it wasn't saved, we have the issue where when I do the models thing, uh, which will run now. So for some reason, we don't get the call ID as a variable here, which I, I don't know why we wouldn't get that. What I can do also is I can do final string hello, just to do a test. So what I did was I did a test like this just to see, does this even update that file? And if we run this and go here and do EX and then go back in, we can see that the hello string that I just added is actually gone. So that means that it does update this file, but it seems not to update it based on the resource file here for some reason. Let's say that we add just a hello, a string, just to see if it adds this then. So it doesn't add that variable, which tells me that for some reason, it seems to be like pointing to a different file, which I feel like that that's what was happening before as well. And it's very frustrating because what I think happens for some reason is that it starts out pointing to the original resource.ts file, but then I update something here. And now all of a sudden this, the models generation thing, it doesn't actually point to that new file. It points to the old file for some reason. And you could say, well, why don't you just add this variable here? But really it says something here, like you shouldn't really change anything in this file. If I change that, then I'll need to change so many other things. And if I ever run this command again, then it will break, which means no good. So undo that. But then the question is, why does it not update? Okay, so this is pretty interesting, but I mean, the specific issue seems to be with either the name of this or the fact that we're using ID twice, because when I add hello here and then go to the actual file, we get hello here added. So it seems like there's some issue with using the ID thing specifically. So maybe if we just make it a string instead. All right, it seems like we might have now actually been able to save a user to the database. We're gonna see, and then we get to user, Cal, so it's been updated. It says that I'm a woman. Uh, it says that the gender preference is home. Like this, it did update. About me, Chad. I don't think I typed in Chad. Oh, I did type in Chad. Well, that's actually really cool. We can now add stuff to the user to, now we have all the setup, I think, except the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually add location information as well about the user. And the way that I'm gonna do that is, well, I asked Grok about it. And basically what we got was that we can use Google Maps API. We can use that to basically allow the user to just set where they are. I want to avoid having like location data in the app to start out with. As a user of an app, I always tend to feel a little bit uh, like my privacy is intruded upon when someone asks about my location. The way to circumvent that is going to be to have the users be able to select their own location wherever they want. Hopefully most people are probably going to be reasonable about this and select the location close to them because they want to have an actual chance at dating the person that they match with. 
but that is a separate project. Like where we have to set up a Google console account. We have to get an API key. We have to add that into the, the app. And then we have to make the whole map system work, which just is out of the scope for what we're doing today. My goal for the day was basically to get the setup page or the sign up page, sign up flow. I would say that we have it working now. Now we just need to add features to it. We, we can add it to the database, which is the main point, and then we can just make it uh, more detailed if we want to. So the next step is going to be to add location and then also pictures. So, well, we need to be allowed into the photo album of the user so that they can upload a picture. But in order to upload a picture, we also need to set up uh, storage, I think, in Amplify. I think that is the best way to do it, I think. But I'm pretty happy with the day. We, I think I've solved a few things that I didn't understand before, which is also like the model gen thing, how that works. What I figured out is that the model gen works based off of the cloud sandbox that you're running, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's the case. So what you need to do is you need to update the resource file if you want to update something. And then once you've updated it, you have to run the sandbox environment so that it updates the amplify outputs.json file. And then you can go and create the models and it should do it correctly. But you also have to make sure that you have the relationship set up properly because I think that was, or I know that that was the issue with this thing. Since the relationships didn't make sense, it just didn't add them to the thing, which I don't know why the sandbox environment was able to deploy when the relationships weren't correct, but either way, um, I think we got it to work now. Okay, so now we have, uh, maps actually working so we can select a location so if we set color just as an example and then we go here gender man preference hetero i just realized that preference probably shouldn't be heterosexual homosexual but it should just be man or woman maybe or men or women but either way and then you can actually set your location here uh, i'm going to add an area symbol thing uh, as well so that you can kind of say how large the area is supposed to be. I don't know how to zoom out using this, but I'm going to assume that you can zoom in and out uh, however you want. And you can also type in like auto uh, and you can go to the different city. And then we can set that location. We get the location there and then we can type in about me. Let's see what happens if we press finish. Error saving probably could not run. Okay, because that's I think that actually did save it. It's just, it's unable to move to the page that we want to move to afterwards because ChatGPT or uh, Grok in this case decided to use a different uh, routing system. So user, color, and man, hetero. And then we have the location, which is different from these ones, which tells me that we actually did set a new location. So that's really good. We have the Google Maps feature working. Now we just need to make this look a little bit nicer, I think, and then uh, we should be pretty good to go. Okay, so what I've been able to do now is add the location of a user. The next thing is gonna to be to add the profile picture. And then once we have pictures, location, name, gender, gender preference, age preference, all that, we basically have the app set up and um, we can start doing phone calls, which is pretty, it's not far off right now. We just basically need to add the profile picture. That's the hardest thing that we need to add. And I don't think that's gonna to be too hard. Famous last words, but I don't think it's gonna be that hard. Because so I think we're gonna use this storage. All right, I don't really seem to be getting anywhere with this, and I don't know why. I keep getting the error that uh, S3 access denied when making the API call. Not really sure what that is about. What I think is that there's a mismatch between 
the bucket thing that I want to store the profile pictures on AWS. There's a mis mismatch between that and my local, the one that I'm trying to send it to. So it's like I'm identified for one app on Amplify, but then I'm trying to upload to a different thing, maybe, but I've tried to change that and it doesn't seem like that's the case. The other potential thing that it could be, it could be that I'm not using the correct way of identifying myself or verifying that the user, maybe because we're using like cognito identity pools, maybe that doesn't work and we need to add some sort of like how you get access to it. Maybe you can change it from API key to be the cognito user pools. I don't really know. But according to the example, it seems like I should have done things correctly, the official documentation, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. And I've been going back and forth with uh, Grok and with ChatGPT trying to figure out where the error occurs. It's like an under the hood problem. It's not something that's super easy to just see here that, okay, this is the error. I think there's something missing really, uh, but I don't seem to be getting anywhere. And I've been sitting here for now like two hours just trying to get this to work. I feel like I'm really close, but then nothing happens. So I think the best thing to do now is just take a break and uh, come back to it. I just seem to have hit a wall and I feel like I can probably solve this if I come back tomorrow. We'll see if we can solve it tomorrow. Thank you for watching.